M3 or M2 Pro MacBook Pro. Same price, same looks. Shiny new guy or a proven champion. Or save even more money and go for the M1 Pro instead. In this video I'm gonna help you make the right choice and spend every dollar in the most effective way possible. Imagine you know nothing about MacBooks and Apple's chips, but you want a MacBook. MacBook Air? Nah, too slow. You want a MacBook Pro? The cheapest new one will cost you $1600. And for that kind of money, you're gonna get a really solid laptop. It's got the liquid retina display with ProMotion, the amazing keyboard, a great battery life and super loud speaker. Equipped with the new M3 chip, it looks like a good deal and that's where most people get it wrong. Here's a little refresher. The $1600 MacBook Pro is equipped with the M3 chip that has 8 CPU cores and 10 GPU cores, coupled with 8GB of RAM and 512GB SSD. I guess you know where I'm going. What does the M2 Pro have? 10 to 12 CPU cores and 16 to 19 GPU cores, plus 16GB of RAM and the same 512 SSD. Even the old M1 Pro has 8 to 10 CPU cores and 14 to 16 GPU cores, 16 gigs of RAM and half a terabyte SSD. As you might have guessed by now, my biggest complaint to this new MacBook is the amount of RAM. 8 gigabytes is definitely not enough for 2023 and 2024. Anyone who tried to edit a video on their Mac or do something demanding will tell you that 16 gigs is the absolute minimum. 8 gigs will fill up super fast and then the Mac will start to slow down. I actually made a video about RAM in MacBooks, how it works and how much you might need for certain tasks. Give it a watch and then come back here. If you want the M3 chip to spread its wings, you would have to spend $200 on a memory upgrade. And if you're someone who wants to use their Mac for work and do some creative stuff, that would be a really bad way to spend your money. With a memory upgrade, it would be an $1800 laptop, only 200 bucks cheaper than the M3 Pro MacBook Pro that comes preloaded with 18 gigs of RAM and a proper chip. That's where we start to really compare the new M3 MacBook Pro and the old M2 Pro. M2 Pro comes with 16 gigs of RAM, so right out of the box you're not gonna have any performance limitations. Multitasking will be faster and more responsive, and heavy apps would work better. Trust me, I know what I'm talking about. I shoot all videos myself and edit them in Final Cut. I used to use an M2 MacBook Air with 8 gigs of RAM for this, and only when I upgraded to the M2 Pro MacBook did I feel a real speed. So if you like what I'm doing, please like this video, leave a comment and sub to the channel. The algorithm needs to know. The RAM size is not the only thing that's better on the M2 Pro. As I already said, it has more CPU and GPU cores. In tests, the CPU of the M3 with 8 cores scores like the 10-core M2 Pro and around 20% more than the base M1 Pro. This is great news for developers and everyone who does CPU-dependent work. However, the GPU tests set things right. M3 GPU is much slower than the base M2 Pro. Just look at this difference. M2 Pro is almost 50% faster. Even the base M1 Pro outperforms M3 in terms of graphics by about 20%. From what I found, this trend continues to the real workflow. M3 does have a couple of cool systems and features that help it be more efficient and powerful, but this is still not enough to beat M2 Pro in raw power, especially with those 8 gigs of memory. All graphics intensive tasks on the M3 take longer to complete than on the M2 Pro. In video editing, M3 is behind by a sizable margin, which means that if you're into video editing or you want to learn it, you should go for the M2 Pro instead. Exporting clips and projects will still be faster simply because of all those extra cores. If you're a photographer, you also might want to choose the M2 Pro. 16 gigs of RAM and more cores make applying effects and exporting photos much faster on the M2 Pro once again. Only if you pay $200 extra for 16 gigs of RAM will you get close to the results of the M2 Pro, but that will be 200 bucks away from the M3 Pro. You got the gist. What I also find interesting is that the M1 Pro is actually not that far off the M3. In Geekbench CPU tests it's only slightly slower, but wins in graphics. In the real world it also holds on really well, proving that the M1 Pro still can do some damage. So just destroy that like button and the comment section and thank you for the sub.
Does everything I said mean you shouldn't buy the M3 MacBook Pro? Not quite. It's really similar to the M2 Pro in all the important places, except RAM. It has its quirks, like slightly higher display brightness. But it also has drawbacks, like one less Type-C and the support for only one external display. Yes, it is unlikely that you're ever gonna use more than one, but that is still a limitation. The new M3 MacBook Pro costs $1600, and the base M2 Pro costs just as much. However, the M1 Pro now is even cheaper, so if you want to cost-cut everything, that still might be a valid option. I think the M3 MacBook Pro will be perfect for people who care more about the display, speakers and their image than about performance. M3 is not a slouch, but to really make it work like it should, you have to buy the $200 RAM upgrade, which makes the deal not so sweet anymore. If you are an office worker who occasionally wants to edit a short video or do some light Lightroom, but don't want to buy MacBook Air, then the M3 MacBook Pro is for you. But if you want to actually do some real work, go for the M2 Pro and you're not gonna regret it. And if you're really serious, the M3 Pro is waiting for you. It is not easy to buy the right MacBook for you, but when you buy comes the real challenge – making it yours. And I actually made two videos with the best apps for your new MacBook, so be sure to subscribe to the channel and watch them next. See you in the next one.